Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzle loading. We're heading to the shop to build our Investarm Plains pistol. We're into our home stretch here. I've sanded and got this pretty well cleaned up uh, for, for where I'm going to take it. Now we're going to do something called raising the grain. And it's something that you'll see a lot of builders talk about um, when it comes to finishing their wood stocks. Let's see if we can get that. A little shaving out of there first. Get out of here. And if you've done a lot of woodworking, um, you'll know that when you get wood wet, it has a tendency to get a little fuzzy. And we, we don't want that on our final stain and our oiling. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-wet the stock to raise up the ends of the grain as it runs through the entire stock here. Then we're going to just gently sand that down with our 400 grit sandpaper just to get those curly cues out of there. So I'm just taking, I've got a little container of water here. Just out of the hydrant. I've got a clean rag. Important you want a clean rag based on my understanding and we're just going to soak this thing. Not soak it but we're going to rub water into the stock. And you can see it's kind of a dry January day here. That dries pretty quick and that's fine. We're going to get all around here. Keep an eye on where you've been, where you haven't. Usually you have a little more time than I'm having right now. And it's, to my understanding, not a super scientific thing. You just want the stock to get wet and then you want it to dry completely. So I'm going to flip around here, get our four stock. In my experience, this can cause some of your inlets to become a little tight. Um, but that's generally not a, too big of a problem. So we'll let this fully dry out. And we'll take a look up close here and see if we can see any of that raised grain that we're talking about. At this stage, because we're going to have a lot of things that we're waiting to dry as we move forward here with our finishing, um, it's a great time to come in and work on something like your uh, ramrod here. You can see that we have uh, so just some gnarly wood here at either end. Uh, we can work on taking this down a little bit. This is kind of a coarse or, or medium coarseness file just to get it ready. And then we can do the same stain to our ramrod as we do to our, the rest of our stock. It's not going to necessarily look the same because typically your, your ramrod is going to be a harder wood. Like uh, here in the United States we have hickory a lot. This is the go-to ramrod. Whereas your stocks are usually a little bit softer or a little bit uh, weaker. Not in a bad way, but hickory is really a go-to for a strong ramrod. And I'm not too picky on these. I'll just kind of hold it in my hand. And run that file back and forth. And you can see I'm rotating that. As I'm running that file. And that's good enough for me. Flip over to our other side. Come back a little bit farther. Kind of taper the entirety of the rod. Go in with my 150. Then on those ends, I can come in with my 400. And then the ramrod itself is good to go and, and ready to move on to our finish. A couple wet spots here still, but as that's drying, see if I can show you some of that grain change. It's difficult 
to see you might be able to see a little bit of it there kind of how that you can see some of those little bumps across the edge of that stock that is that grain being raised up and that's exactly what we want now we don't want that at the end so I'm gonna set this back down we'll let the rest of that mortise or that side plate panel dry out our stock is dried out now we have raised grain just about everywhere so I'm gonna take a fresh clean piece of our 400 grit sandpaper I don't want to use a piece that we have been using on anything with metal particulates in it you know something that we've been polishing our our steel or our brass with if we do that we can track those metal shavings into our freshly sanded stock and streak where we don't want to streak now this is how I do it you might do it differently I'm just backing this with my thumb we're doing a gentle pass just enough to remove those curls and grain. I'm not pressing hard at all. Coming through. Doing my best to hit every area that I can. Sometimes, depending on the grain and the wood that you're using, um, based on my understanding, it's how kind of hard or brittle the wood is but if you have like a hard walnut stock or a tough maple stock um, you can just rub your hand over those curled up pieces of grain and it'll peel them right off switching up my placement on the sandpaper again I'm not pressing hard I'm just gently going over everything back here to go down the grip be sure to hit our tang back of our side plate panel and you can see some color change with that because we're taking off that top layer of wood Have a lot of end grain out here in our grip. I just want that to be back to the same texture it was, nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time, because we aren't seeing a whole lot of grain movement there. I believe this to be a beech stock, so it's not going to be as hard as the walnut stocks. Um, I wish this was walnut, but I'm thinking that we're going to aquafortis this or iron nitrate this just to see what happens. It's an interesting stain and it's an easy stain to apply. So I'm just curious what happens with it. So I'm giving this a nice deep rub that water. Let it sit there once again. Dry out. As that's drying you can take some time and I encourage you to take some time to clean up your workspace. You can see I've gotten most of the dust off of my bench here to start my metal finishing prep. 
Uh, and to do this, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, one, we've got our, our bench cleaned off, and uh, we've got some supplies here. So first, I've got just a scrap piece of cardboard to put down on my bench here. You could layer this up if you really wanted to, but this is going to keep any solution off my bench. Not that my bench is super clean, but when we're dealing with like rust browning solutions, it's important, I think, to keep things away, uh, especially from your tools. You don't want to get any rust brown or browning solution into your files. That can be very bad. So as we move forward with prepping our metal hardware here, I'm going to have another clean rag. And then we need to, before we apply any solution to our metal hardware, we need to degrease it. So um, we naturally excrete oils in our hands, no matter how dry our hands are in the middle of winter. <laughs> um, and we need to cut that oil away so that our solution goes on evenly. And to do that, I've got some 70% isopropyl alcohol here. You can use something like Windex. It's cheap and affordable, uh, and very accessible. I just don't have any in the shop right now. So we're going to use just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And then I've got a couple just plastic gloves here that we're going to use to handle our metal hardware so we don't get any more oil on them. It's not the end of the world um, if you do, but if you want a nice, even solution, based on my understanding, we want to have a nice, even application and even cleaning of these parts. So I'll start by laying everything out. Oof, that guy almost disappeared. Something I should have brought up earlier is our screw heads here. It's something that's easy to forget until you get to the, this point in your project. I like to try to brown the heads of my screws and my bolts so that they match the metal hardware. Really easy thing to do is chuck it up in a drill or in your lathe and run it into some sandpaper. I can do that. My 150, do the same thing. My 400. You get a nice looking tang bolt there. That's going to end up matching the rest of our hardware. Something as small as your Extension plate screws, generally, you can just take to your 400 grit and you can get cleaned up pretty easy, pretty quick. With all the screws ready to go now, I put the screws in their own little tin or lid here uh, to make sure that they don't disappear while we're working on this stuff. This is just a plastic lid that I let all the screws set in. There's nothing special there. This makes it easier to not lose them. Then I'll put down some alcohol on my rag, my gloves on. Go ahead and we'll just wipe down all of our metal hardware. Give it a rough, give it a rough wipe. This is just degreasing everything. And in my experience, <laughs> I should probably do it more, but there's still some spots that don't take at the first time, so you have to apply your finish a few times. Which is not a big deal. Should do our brass too. I'm going to treat this with brass black. We'll leave these to the side here, let them dry. We have less uh, rising grain, which is what we want. Depending on the wood that you're using, you might have to go two times, you might have to go four times. It's all in the finish that you want. But for this guy, I really think we're okay. And that's kind of my experience with this European beach. You don't need a whole lot of grain raising for it. I have to imagine that has something to do with the grain structure in the wood. But 
but I don't know enough uh, to say for certain. a lot of builders use a scraper at this point that's a more traditional way to do it and gives you a very naturally feeling stock you get some of those scraped facets in there I really like that and that's a finish I'm gonna do on my Fowler build that we have coming up I really like a scraper finish see a lot of original guns that are like that A really nice look. <sighs> to stain this stock, we're going to be experimenting and using Ye Colonial Aquafortis on this European beach stock. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I'm curious. I really like the dark look you can get with Aquafortis, and uh, I just kind of want to see how it goes. So in addition to the Ye Colonial Aquafortis, uh, you can't get this at Harbor Freight. This is where we're kind of diverging, folks. Um, you can get this from just about any muzzleloading supply shop. I believe that uh, Log Cabin Shop in particular carries this brand. This is different than Iron Nitrate. You'll see them. You, the, the terms used interchangeably. Chemically, to my understanding, Ye Colonial Aquafortis is its own sol iron nitrate-esque solution where you can get other iron nitrate solutions that are different. So I believe especially the Kibler Long Rifles iron nitrate solution is different than this. In addition to this, I have a disposable plastic cup here to pour my solution into, and I have just a acid brush here, kind of a disposable brush we'll be using to apply it. We want to always pour our stain solution into a disposable container and not work from the bottle or the vessel that the solution comes in because our brush can pick up things that can cause any solution um, to react and you can totally burn out or chemically um, the entire bottle of solution. So we always want to pour it out into its own container. Our directions say for this to shake well. We're going to apply two coats before we blush it. We're going to let each coat dry completely, which, like our water, should not be too bad. Pouring out a small amount of our solution, and I'm capping our bottle. You can see I have gloves on. We're using a piece of cardboard here. We're just going to brush and apply it. Part of Mitch Yates' talk at the 2023 Gunmakers Fair at Kempton discussed iron nitrate and aquafortis and his experience with it. I encourage you to check out that video if you're interested. He goes over uh, some of the historical documentation and the historic use of it, of iron nitrate and, and uh, aquafortis, as it relates to some of the contemporary things out there. Now, continues to be controversial, but I do not apply any stain or oil to the inlets. With a good solid inlet like we have here, they don't need protection. That's a modern notion. I have yet to see an original piece that had any stain or oil in the patch box or in any of the inlets. Running a little low. 
If you're unfamiliar, the neat thing about iron nitrate or aquafortis as we're using it here, I should just say aquafortis to avoid any confusion, is that it goes on one color and then when you heat it, it chemically changes. So it will change in color. On maple, it turns into a rich red brown, depending on the kind of maple that you're using. On walnut, we'll turn it black, which looks really cool, in my opinion. I wouldn't do it with a curly piece or an ornate piece of walnut, but a plain piece of walnut I think looks really neat with aquafortis. Okay, that is done. I'm going to try to hang it to dry now so that it can dry completely. For a browning solution, I've set everything up much the same. We have a container for a solution. We're going to be using cotton swabs this time. And for a solution, much like our Investarm Gemmerhaken, we're going to use our Wildcat Valley browning solution. This is from Flintlocks LLC here in Indiana. Uh, this was originally made by Jerry Eater. I've had a lot of comments uh, on the channel about learning from Jerry Eater and buying supplies from Jerry Eater over the years. Um, his son, Mike Eater, uh, keep, has kept the business going and, and continues to supply. So um, with this solution, it's an apply every 12 hours kind of thing. We're going to start off here with a light coat on our iron hardware. Our brass hardware will receive Jack's Black. So it might even be too much for us. Notice I went ahead and dropped the nipple into the barrel. Did that in an attempt to keep the browning solution out of the threads. And this is not an aggressive browning solution. It's one of the reasons I like it. It gives us a nice color and a nice look but it's not destroying anything go ahead and switch around and hold on by our breech end here take special care too to get our muzzle. Do your best to not get any in the bore. You can plug it if you'd like with a rod and a rag. But it's not been too bad in my experience. So we'll sit and let that age. We'll move on to our other parts. I've been told that you can use a browning solution on your brass and get kind of a neat look. That's something we'll try on a different on a different build. You can see that different parts of this are taking the solution differently. Some of some of it's taken quicker. That's where the multiple coats comes in and applying every 12 hours. It's going to even out any of those differences. You want to make sure to get your sides as well, whatever piece you're working on, especially sides that are exposed. You don't want uh, something sticking out that shouldn't, you know. This stuff is very precise in my experience, so you you can't really count on it to fill out an area that you don't get it to get the brush on. 
Now we're on to our screw heads. Sometimes it can be easier to come in here and dab the screw heads with them sitting. I'm not too worried about the solution on the threads. Like I said, this is not an aggressive solution. It's not going to destroy those threads. I'm going to go ahead and give my barrel another coat since we've got enough solution here. I didn't do a great job of it on our first coat, but um, I was told to get better results if you can do an entire barrel flat at once. It's kind of getting a full brush stroke all the way down. With this stuff now browned, I'm going to set my other tools to the side. And I'm going to take all these outside to brown. Uh, not worried about this solution because like I said it's not very aggressive but um, I've heard horror stories of the the kind of off-gassing and this stuff getting into the air uh, messing with somebody's shop so as a, a, out of an abundance of precaution I'm going to take this stuff outside so it can off-gas outside and not affect any of our tools but now we're just waiting for our clock to run out on this another 12 hours we'll put another coat on and we're waiting for our aquafortis to dry Here's the color difference on our Aquafortis so far since our browning started. You can see back here in the grip we're getting almost no color there um, as that's really started to dry out. So I have quite a bit. It's really dark in the end grain like around uh, our panels there. You can see in a little bit in our grip where we have a lot of exposed end grain. Uh, so this is going to take a while to dry but it's important for us to let it completely dry before we add in another coat. I had a realization this morning as I took a long, slow drag of my first cup of coffee that we should have dabbed a little aquafortis in the barrel channel and tested what it was going to do. I'm going to chalk this up to a bit of impatience and uh, toddler brain. My, my daughter is heading towards two right now and going through all those changes, which is really wonderful, but it does affect your brain. So it's the morning after we applied our two coats of Aquafortis, and this is what we've got. We have a pretty green stock, which is really standard for Aquafortis, which gives me a little bit of confidence, really, that we're seeing a typical reaction for this stock. It looks ugly right now. It looks hideous. But we haven't completed the chemical reaction yet. Here I've got a heat gun. We're going to apply heat gently to the stock until we get a change in color and until it changes to hopefully a rich dark brown. If this doesn't work and it's really ugly, I'm going to think on it for a couple of days and try to figure out what to do. Uh, we'll send out some, some calls for aid and hope that uh, somebody has something to get me out of this mess, if it is a mess. I'm going to turn this on. Might be a little hard to hear me. We're going to let that start to get a little warm. I'm just going to slowly apply heat to this thing. From what I've seen, we don't want to focus on one area. And I want to bring our heat around and around, much like with everything else. Now, our thinner areas, you can see up here already on the forestock, we're starting to change color there a little bit because that's much thinner than the rest. You can cook this. I suppose, oh, there's my heat adjustment there on the back. You can cook your wood. So we don't want to uh, we don't want to go too much. 
I'm running my heat gun here on about a three and a half. You could do this with a hair dryer too. A heat gun typically gives you a little more control. So they were starting to blush. You can apply not enough heat and you'll still have that green tone. So we want to make sure that we're letting it complete its change in color. It's not necessarily bad to have a green gun if that's your intention, but it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it's kind of hard to, to argue that that's what you meant. Still looking a little green, which has me nervous. I think we've pretty successfully blushed it. I mean, we have a nice rich color here on this face that I like. We're just not getting anywhere along our grip. Here's all of our metal hardware after it's been coated with one coat of our Wildcat Valley Rust Brown. It's been about 24 hours i wasn't able to get back to the shop as you can see and, and here really i guess it's really damp and it's been drizzling and been kind of nasty and i think that's helped us a little bit so we have some rusting going on here it's not super even yet but that's to be expected after just one coat so i've made sure that everything is dry after being out here in the damp, and we're going to apply our second coat. Back here on the inside, I've got my trigger guard. Because it's made of brass, we need to treat it differently uh, than we've been treating the rest of our hardware. So I've got another uh, empty cup here. I've got a cotton swab, and we're going to be using Jack's Brass Black. Now this is a, a brass darkener, um, and it just works like any other brass black out there to chemically alter the color of the surface. This has been popularized uh, in recent history by Kibler's Long Rifles. It's one of the solution that he recommends. I believe sells. We just need a very small amount. Very similar in color, you'll notice, to many of other other solutions out there. I have heard that you can use uh, rust brown on brass and it will give you a different color uh, but it's not something that I have, ex have uh, worked with personally I'm going to give everything on the exterior a good coat of that.
you can see there even just over a short amount of time it's already changed the color quite a bit a little trouble getting down there in those kinks those curves but that's okay so we're gonna Much like everything else, this can take multiple coats. And you can see there that there are some areas that are really getting treated, really like the color we're getting out of that, and then there's some areas that we aren't. It takes time. There's a swab there on the inside. And we'll set that to the side again for a little bit of time. Let that dry before we do another coat. Off camera, I've been stalling a little bit, if you haven't noticed. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with this at this stage. There's a little bit more of a green hue here in the end grain than I would like. Um, and it makes me wonder about our next steps. We might be able to apply more Aquafortis, bring it out, or it might enhance the green tone that we have. Another thing that we can do is we could come in with a brown stain and go over the Aquafortis brown that we have. Our third option is to apply some oil to it and let her rip, tater chip as Wayne Estes would say, um, to kind of investigate this a little bit before we went through and rust browned and blacked our brass, I applied a little bit of Birchwood Casey True Oil, very common finishing oil, very popular, to a, a spatter that we had inside of our barrel channel. You can see there it gives us a really nice red brown. Um, a little bit of that oil got up here onto our barrel channel. We have a nice rich chocolate brown there. A little bit also in my haphazardness got around here as well. These happy little mistakes, as Bob Ross would say, make me think that we can apply oil to this and see how it looks. So I think that's what I'm going to do. If it doesn't work, I will, like we've done this whole time, record record it and show you <laughs> how we try to fix it. That's kind of the fun about this. I don't, I haven't really taken a lot of risks in the past on these kits. I just kind of put a stain on it that I know is going to work. Um, and this has been an interesting divergence from that. So we're going to try a little bit of oil here next, see how this looks. And if it doesn't work, we'll figure out how to fix it. I've not personally used the true oil before. I think most of the kits that I've done on the channel, we've used just a Danish oil. But we have a bottle of this in the shop. So I thought, hey, it might be kind of fun. It might be a little more accessible. Comes in a smaller bottle, makes it a little easier to get for folks. Whew. That doesn't look half bad. <laughs> I'm not a gambling man. I've had some folks ask me during the process of this kit if my commentary is live or recorded after. Um, and it's it's all live. I, I could go back through and record it um, after and, and probably explain more succinctly. But it's a lot easier for me to kind of do it live and I, I feel like it's more fresh that way. I don't have to think about or try to remember what I was thinking or, or write down what I was thinking in an attempt. To, to recite what I was thinking. As you can tell, I'm not very good with words anyway. So it's a lot easier just to kind of talk as I'm doing it. I'm using a cloth rag here. 
in the past I've had reasonable success with just a shop towel is the brand of them. It's like a heavy duty paper towel, but they do leave fuzzies now and then. So I, I've found that using a cloth rag works a lot better. Man, I, I can't believe uh, I'm just tickled pink at how this looks. It's exactly what I wanted. I was really nervous. I thought I'd really, really borked this one up, guys. At this point, I'm not going to apply any more oil. I don't want my inlets to get too tight. I like to apply oil with all the hardware in there. But with that Aquafortis, I really wanted to know what color it was going to be. Um, so we're going to be applying oil to this for quite a long time. This is going to continue to soak up this oil that we just put in there. I don't think that one coat is going to affect us too much. As a part of the short and sweet instructions for our Ye Colonial Aquafortis blend here, we have here at the bottom, neutralize with a sodium bicarbonate solution once desired color is obtained. When dry, rub vigorously with tri-coat finish or other linseed oil finish. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start with uh, neutralizing our sodium bicarbonate. Carbonate. Ne neutralizing with our sodium bicarbonate. Originally I was thinking I could get away with just letting this go gnarly and black. Um, I solicited the thoughts of some real builders out there and the general consensus was I should neutralize this. So that's what we're going to do. I have here our stock. Um, it is pretty dry. There's a couple, you know, spots here that aren't fully dry from that oil. But according to the folks I talked to, that single coat of oil should not be a problem for neutralizing. Um, so your mileage may vary at home. I have here a little bit of warm water in a plastic dish. Then I have our shop baking soda, Arm & Hammer, classic. So we're going to pop that open. And I'm... I don't really know how much to use, so we're going to use quite a bit. This has been around for a while, so I want to make sure that it does its job. Okay, we'll start with that. Maybe we'll sprinkle out some here to use. I've got a couple cheap dollar store toothbrushes. The local Amish dented can grocery store that I frequent carries these. They're really handy. My understanding is some this I mean it's not hot water. It's just kind of it's warm out of the tap. And we're gonna scrub it. I don't know that not neutralizing it will harm anything. But I know that it will continue to darken over time. And this might continue to darken even though we're attempting to neutralize it. From what I gather, if you're doing a highly carved muzzleloader, which you might do someday if you're starting out building one of these, you don't necessarily want to aquafortis it or iron nitrate it because of that chemical reaction and how it just keeps going. Um, you can lose you can lose carving in it because it just continues to get black and black and black. Not too concerned about this. So we don't have any carving. I think I'll let that sit there for a little while. While our stock dries, we can take a look at our brass trigger guard, which is here. We've let our jacks 
Grass black work on that some. You can see we've got some change in color there. I'm going to do a few coats of this Jack's brass black and in between coats I'm going to scrub it with a little bit of just clean tap water and a, a polymer steel wool commonly referred to as scotch bright. You can get this just about anywhere for a couple bucks. Um, I like putting it in a little water. I find that it gets me um, a little bit of a different texture and it keeps the uh, fuzzy particles uh, out of the air. I found as crazy as it might sound <laughs> Scotch brighting this stuff, I start to taste something odd and metallic, so I like to I like to wet it personally. Um, I don't need much, so I can just tear that little piece in half. Scotch bright a little wet here, rinse it. We'll go ahead and start on the inside. We'll switch over to the outside. You'll notice the color changes as you scrape, but it's harder to get the color to change in that crease. So you might have spots on your guard that look a little bit darker based on how much access your Scotch Bright has to them. And you can use that to your advantage. And it helps the aging process, having some more gunk and dirt up in those creases. Don't forget your sides. And, I mean, you can get a decent finish, in my experience, with one coat, but I don't think that it hurts to do a couple coats on this stuff. I find that it gives you a real depth of color. Got kind of a busted paper towel here. I'm going to use it to dry off the guard so we can apply another coat. That's how it looks after one coat. A little dust back there. And it doesn't look bad. It gives you kind of a artificially aged brass look. I want a little bit more, so we'll get our trusty Q-tip out here. Start another round. It's been four or five hours since our first coat. I have found in the past that leaving this stuff to sit overnight can give you a more drastic result. So if you have a piece of hardware that's just not taking the brass black or the barrel bluing, any of the lighter uh, metal finishes, you might try letting it set overnight or for a couple days even. As long as it's not an aggressive rusting solution, it can't really do any harm. You can always buff it back with a scotch bright or steel wool. So you can see right now, in comparison to how it was when we came in, it's just kind of a maroon brown color it's going to darken uh, even more with that chemical solution till it's black like we saw earlier and then we wipe it back and just kind of keep going with it seeing what happens i think this coat i will leave until tomorrow morning just to see how far we can get with that solution and, and what changes after a few minutes of drying this is how our stock is looking. You can start to really see that baking soda in there. It's starting to dry and fall off. So what I'm gonna do now is just gently rinse this. Try to get that baking soda out of there. We were a little aggressive, I think, in our inlets here, but we're gonna wipe it from the exterior, get it these crusties out of our interior of our inlets, and get this moving on. do that I've just got a bucket of eh, still warm water I have my toothbrush toothbrushes over here I 
That'll just kind of... I know what you're thinking, water on wood. It's going to crack, it's going to blow up. It shouldn't. Just like our whiskering, this should be absorbed in the stock and then released. Get that gunk out of there. Okay, got a rag here. Used to kind of dry that off. Get the excess water off of the surface. Now, theoretically, I imagine that baking soda could abrase the surface some. I'm not super worried about that. At this point, the stock is still a little moist, a little damp to the touch, but it's going to be off gassing that water for quite a while now. At this point, We should be able to let this hang in the shop and just dry for maybe 24 hours. That's what we want to do. At that point, I think it should be pretty dry. The furnace in the shop is running. So we should be okay. I can see a little bit of that green coming in, but since we are going to put oil on this, I'm not super worried. It'll oil back up nice, or it should. And if it doesn't, we'll find a solution. There we are. Our iron nitrate, or our aquafortis, I should say. Sorry for the confusion, folks. Our aquafortis now should be neutralized. And we should be stuck with, in a good way, this nice deep brown color. We'll hang this up, let it dry, and be back.